Some of that. What's the magic word? Could you please? You know this. You know this. What was your pay? And? Oh. Episode four. This is Boys with Hay episode four. Thank you. Would you look at that? Who would have thought? <laughs> you Not come us. you go straight for the back Not too. Us. There's a lot of hair in the back of my head. There's right? more on top. Not for me. I'm like I like get a really bad mullet when I grow my hair out. Business on top, party in the back, baby. Oh yeah. Business in the front. Anyway, Just keeping the track. Yeah, no. Welcome to Boys with Hair, episode four. Uh, <laughs> 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 You're so disgusting. All right, I'm good. Cool, cool. Boys with Hair, episode four. So, how's back week, past week been, James? Uh, it's been. It, this week has been a good week. But this specific day has been a great, and let me tell you why. Flashback to the first episode, I said I was a film and media studies major. You know, because I'm I was a film and media studies. I still am, but I also mentioned I applied to e media, electronic media. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the College Conservatory of Music, CCM. which is a. I'm gonna smack you so hard. Yeah, I bet you will. I'm gonna smack you so hard your beard comes back. <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, it's in CCM, which is a very competitive college on campus. It's like up there with Juilliard. I detect, honestly, I don't know why E Media is in CCM. It's I don't know. The way that I look at it, there's music and then there's commercial music production, uh, and then it's like that with E Media in the same college. Kind of makes sense, but you know. Yeah. Fair enough. But basically, I literally said, please accept me because I applied. And I was like really nervous because I applied way after the deadline. I showed you, you my, my application. application. Please answer. <laughs> basically. And uh, I would like to announce that your boy got in. I'm in it. I'm in E-Media Yay, now. Jameson. Let's go. Yay. Let's go, bro. Yeah. And there was some other stuff that happened today. Like I got a class canceled for tomorrow so I can like sleep. But yeah. like, who cares? I'm, I'm an E-media now. Good. We ain't watching movies anymore now, boys. We making movies. We them boys. We them boys. Well, I'd like to offer my sincerest uh, congratulations to Jameson. Thank you. Um, Handshakes. Yeah. So that's good. Um, I don't think I've actually seen you in a week. I think the last time we saw each other was That's the last true. one. Yeah, I yeah. actually, th- I, I agree. I think that was the last it's time we weird. saw each other. Life's a movie, bro. It goes by And so we're all fast. watching it. <laughs> <laughs> That's we're it. All just, we're all just actors in a movie. Okay. Well, yes. since it is that time of the week, and it has been exactly two weeks since my exactly last Game weeks. Corner, I'm going to go ahead and go into my Game Corner segment. Alright guys, so I know last week we talked about uh, Sayonara Wild Hearts, which is dear to my heart. <laughs> anyway, um, so like I was saying last week, um, I usually just want to take maybe like 5-10 minutes and talk about a game that maybe isn't as on the surface as others are, um, but that I still find to be enjoyable. And this week we're going to be talking about Shovel Knight. Yeah, <laughs> these names are How, so amazing. So, so Shovel Knight was developed by Yacht Club Games. It's a 2D side-scrolling platform game, and it's sort of like it was released by like a Kickstarter crowdfunding sort of project, and it was initially released on Nintendo consoles, but it got so successful that it was released on like Xbox, PlayStation, basically everything you can think of. So the idea is that you're this knight, and it's the whole graphical style. Again, I'll put footage up. Is like this sort of 8 bit like <coughs> like it's an NES game almost and the music is super badass it's just as it could be but the idea is that you're this dude and it just starts off with like you and there's like your uh what's your name her name's Shield Knight 
So it's like Shovel Knight and Shield Knight, you know, hi, lovey dovey. And then Shield Knight disappears, and Shovel Knight's like, I must save her. So you go around, like, all the, and fight all these different bosses. Like, each stage is centered around, like, a different theme. Like, one's, like, a, one's sort of like, um, the boss is a plague doctor. So naturally, it's like, all like potions and like dark remedies and stuff and it's sort of like you're walking into hogwarts or something like a dark version of that and one's like centered around like wind turbines and that kind of stuff so you got to jump on yes jameson it's just the potion things when you said it's like walking into hogwarts made me think of uh shrek 2 the fairy godmother's little 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 potion room that's all i wanted to say (laughs) i have something to say about shrek 2 here in a second so hold that thought corner but corner it's really cool, and one of the things that I really admire about it is that it's very difficult, which I find that a lot of games that I... Because I like Nintendo, you know? I've said that before. Um, and I feel as I get older, a lot of the games get easier, probably because most of them technically are marketed towards children, but, like, whatever. Maybe I just get good. Anyway, um... But it's really difficult and gives you a challenge. I found myself multiple times like dying at certain stages and just screaming and just getting pissed. A lot. A lot. <laughs> this is like me at like normal games. Yeah. Like I, I played Injustice. I beat it in like two days, but every time I would fight like a boss or something mm-hmm. and I would lose, I would literally just like scream. I'd be like Yeah. I'd be like ah! And then I'd like cry. I love crying. I'm oh, crying. Easy, dude. But that's so that's one of the cool things about it as well. And also there's different st- there's like different little mini stages that aren't just like full on levels. There's like town squares you can go into certain shops, buy like potions, buy certain items to use, um, upgrade th- your armor, any of that. Um, you can there's little um, like there's little how do I say this? Like bosses, like mini boss fights, then they're like enemies that will like walk around the world map, and if you run into them, you have to fight that boss, and it's kind of cool. You kind of gotta fight them to get past. So it's like you shall not pass, but you know that's tight. And no, but I just really like the game. I think anybody who enjoys video games, enjoys platformers, enjoys retro, just enjoys games as a whole should check it out. There's also a shit ton of DLC for it. I played all of the DLC. There's like three, four other campaigns. A is it free DLC? No, it is not. Uh. But it's good. They're based on like some of the most popular bosses, like the Plague Doctor, like the, <coughs> like King Knight, like. Anyway, um, I keep doing this, but it's really fun. I would check it out, and yeah, Shovel Knight. Game corner. Game corner. Game corner. Game corner. All right. All right. So I wanted to talk real quick. Tommy, I hate you so much. Stop <laughs> texting us during our podcast. Yeah, Tommy's our switcher for today. He Yeehaw. Just me something to make me laugh, and now I'm calling him out for it. If he Anyways. texts you, can I play Switch during our podcast? <laughs> no. Stop. <laughs> anyway, so I want to talk about this movie I watched Monday. I told Jack a little bit about it, but I didn't tell him the title. I know Tommy in there knows about it because I told him about it Monday, I think, or Tuesday, yesterday. And uh, Yesterday was Tuesday. This movie I watched Monday night at like midnight. I had a class at 9.30 and I had to wake up at 8.15, but I watched it until 2.30 a.m. anyways. And I have to tell you, this is one of the most phenomenal masterpieces of cinema I've ever seen. It's called Velocipaster. <coughs> Give me a sec. It's about what? It's about a pastor, who uh, it's like a werewolf thing. He's he's a pastor, but you know, come come nighttime, boom, Velociraptor. It's it's one of those movies that's like supposed to be bad. Like it's 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 made it's purposefully to be bad. Is it a parody? No, it's not a parody, but it's like. It, like they, I feel like the writer and, and director, it's the same person. He also edited the movie. He made sure to say, written, directed, and edited by. I don't remember his name because I didn't really care. <laughs> Clearly, really it's not important. I was just really invested in Velocipaster, bro. But um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think he his intent was to like make the movie purposefully bad. But it's funny for that reason. Like it's it's not funny in how like the room is funny. Like this 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 movie is purposely funny 
because it's made to be bad if you get what i'm saying and uh some of my because like obviously what they wrote the script and it was not like the budget they had was probably like two cents and a, a string and a button found in bernie sanders's pocket it's more than i got <laughs> <laughs> but um one two i'm just gonna say two of my favorite moments in the whole movie and okay. they're in the, the first act the the main character is uh his he's a priest or a pastor he's the Velasa pastor if you will uh he watches his parents die because he like comes out of the church he's like mom dad and they're out of car waving and then it cuts to him and then you hear an explosion and him fall back oh. and he's like no and it turns back to the car and it just says on the screen VFX colon car on fire. And it's what the <laughs> <fuck>? <laughs> yeah, it's like amazing, but that's but like that's not my favorite. Wh- why I love the scene I'm about to talk oh, about. Okay. It's just like, ex- it's just like uh, exposition for it. The pastor's like talking. talking to his like head pastor. I think I don't yeah. know. I don't know how that any of that works personally, but um, the guy's like, you just need to go find yourself. You know, you got to go where God's never been and explore yourself. And he's like, in the pa- the velocity pastor like go where God's never been. And then it cuts to like the credit, the opening credits, where it's just like him driving, and it's kind of dope because it's like filmed like uh, you know how in Pulp Fiction Bruce Willis gets in that taxi, yeah, and it's like green screen, yeah. it's like that, which is kind of dope. Okay, there's like moments of brilliance in this movie. Like the first opening shot is a really good shot. Yeah, I really like these opening credits. Granted, there's a scene where he's like looking backwards, like he's backing out, but the background's going forward. Oh yeah, yeah, but. It cuts to it's the end of the credits. Before the credits, he was like, "I'm gonna go where God's never been," and it just cuts to him and l- like a random force just walking around. He just goes, "China," <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, I was like, "Yo, what?" <laughs> he said, "Yeah, China." Yeah. yeah, and then my second favorite part: there's a man. He's a he's a gangster, if you. Part of a gang, for those of you that yeah. don't know what a gangster is. <laughs> yeah, and uh, he's just chilling on a street corner, and this woman that works for him walks up to him, and she's like, hey, Frankie, and he just takes off his hat. He's, like, really bald. He kind of looks like the guy from Stranger Things Season 3 we were talking about that was, like, best buds with Alexi. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, looks, he looks exactly like that guy. I'm looking up his name right now. Go ahead. Okay. But he looks like that guy, and, he's just, and he just takes off his hat in a Boston accent. And he just goes, oh, hi, Carol, and then just slaps her. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> and then she gets up, and she's like, oh, you so happy. He's like, yo, why do they call me Frankie Mermaid? <laughs> and she just looks up, and she goes, now, for the audience, I'm sorry. I'm about to say a bad word, but I'm quoting it, so it's okay. But he's like, why do they call me Frankie Mermaid? And she looks up, and she says, because you're swimming in bitches. <laughs> and he's like, that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Also, for the record, Murray. <laughs> His name's Murray. No, um, but the movie, there's, like, a scene in the middle of the movie between the uh, Veloc pastor and his love interest, and it's edited in a way that's, like, a really good fan edit of a TV show or something that would be edited in a TV w- show for, w- like, like a, like, a season finale or something like that. Wait, what do you mean by, like, it's good for, like, a fan? Well, it's, it's, it's good edit. in general, but it's, yeah. like, something you see, like, in a fan edit. Props to this guy because, like, I just started, like, really editing stuff, and I have no idea how he edited <laughs> any of that. I was like, dang, man. There's a scene where the Velocipaster fights a bunch of ninjas, and it's literally just, like, one of those blow-up T-Rex costumes. <laughs> 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 it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, uh, th- there's a part where Frankie Mermaid is in uh, is give- confessing in confessional at a church, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A church that the Velocipaster works at, and... He's like, <laughs> shut up, Tommy. <laughs> and uh, he's he's like talking to the pastor, and uh, like they can't see each other. Obviously, it's a confessional. Yeah. He's like, he's like, uh, oh, son, my son, why are you here? He's like, well, honestly, father, I just haven't been here for a long time, and I just felt like I should go up. He was like, okay, son, go ahead. What uh, what do you want to absolve your sins of? He's like, Oh, Father, we're going to be here all day if we're talking about all the sins I've done since the last time I came here. <laughs> uh, let's start with this week. I took candy from a baby. I threw the baby Happens in the, the river because I, n- I don't deal with snitches. Happens to the best of us. I do drugs. I sell drugs. 
I kill people. Gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it sounds like a normal dude to me. Oh, yeah, he's great. Frankie yeah. Mermaids, man of the year. Times man of the year. But, yeah, that's Velocipaster. And I just thought I should tell you about it. It's an amazing time to watch with friends. Now, okay, I have one question that I was thinking of the entire time you were talking. Yes, sir. Are his parents Velociraptors or no, people? No, no. Uh, he goes to China, runs into this um, Asian woman, and she's got, like, this thing in her hand. She's like, oh, you have to destroy it. Like, it's... it's Is subtitles. she dying? Yeah. She's like, she you have she to got, destroy it. She has, like, an it. arrow in her, oh. <laughs> in her chest. She's she like, said, destroy oh, it. Destroy it. Make sure no one ever touches it. it. And she's speaking in Chinese, so obviously he doesn't understand her. And he's like, you want me to take it? And she's like, yes. And he just, like, runs, and he touches it, and it burns his hand. And it's a dragon tooth, and it's for the dragon warrior. And, yeah, that's the, that's the Velocipaster. You ever seen... Sp- the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies. You you have yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about this. Um, <laughs> I Sorry, I'm just reading this. I'm just reading this review of Velocipaster that no, Tommy what, sent me. Was it? Is it like bad? He told me I. Tommy, is it okay for me to read this on the podcast? Why you add? Oh. He said he hasn't read yeah. all of it, so needless. Okay, we so into if I run into something that's like rough, I'll stop. Okay, hold on. Before you say that, yeah, I just wanted to say about the Tommy Wire Spider Man. I don't know why, but when you said the hand thing, that reminded me of him getting bit by a spider, oh. and it reminded me of the scene where he's trying to figure out how to do the web. He's, he's like, like, Shazam! Fly, web, <laughs> fly. He goes, Go, web, go. <laughs> that's all no, I wanted to say. Yeah, okay, go ahead. No, there's uh, there was like a trailer for another movie uh, called Spaghetti Man about a guy named Clark Kent. And he has like <laughs> he has like Spider Man powers, but he just like throws spaghetti at people. Anyways, so Sounds Tommy sent me two reviews of of Velocipaster. Here's one. It is currently one a.m. and I just finished watching Velocipaster. Did you write this? <laughs> Quite honestly, I cannot think of anything that I could have done to make the past seventy minutes more worthwhile than watching the cinematic marvel. I will have to start from the beginning of the film which jump starts a wave of interest and suspense with the sudden deaths of Doug's parents by the way the Velocipaster's name is Doug Jones uh, Doug's parents which I have to rank as one of the most heartbreaking <laughs> moments in film history <laughs> second only to the death of Cherokee Jack and threat level midnight uh, the international setting changes and the incredibly creative plot kept me at the edge of my seat yelling Get him, Pastor, at the TV <laughs> repeatedly, which unfortunately <laughs> woke my father up, but I cannot contain my excitement, and I'm not trying to... <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the trailers for or the promo for this. It says, The Velocipaster, a man of the claw. Yeah, should, yeah, I know, a man re- of the claw. We should rebrand this for a white claw ad. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, the way the... the Just saying. The, 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 uh, the man this movie the sincerely is so important especially today and will definitely be in the history books because of all the levels it hits <laughs> finally the way Doug owned up to the ninjas at the end was one of the most iconic moments in history the visual effects gave me goosebumps and I cried when I witnessed his heroic vi- victory if you haven't seen this masterpiece of a film then you're truly missing out on one of the best and frankly most inspiring 70 minutes of your life rate infinity out of 10 and then Tommy said, from another review, quote, amazing movie, 420 out of 69. Well, that's as legit as we're going to get. I mean, I'm looking at Rotten Tomatoes right now, and it's got a 58% tomato score, but it's got a 75 audience score. That's the only one that matters. It is. And I can see a picture of Doug here with a wife beater on and some scales and some pointy teeth that look very fake. Oh, yeah. This movie... It looks incredible. (laughs) It's, like, incredible because of how it's going trying so hard to be bad well luckily it tries to be bad in the best ways like some of the jokes are just like that's amazing i love that joke like oh yeah well if you're interested in watching the loss the velocipaster man of the claw you can watch it on services such as apple tv amazon prime and that was fandango now (laughs) uh voodoo but spelled v-u-d-u Velocipaster. This video is not sponsored. Sponsor, do it, do it. Bet you would it, bro. They're making a sequel this year. Come on, bro. Can you stop? That what is what is? I don't know. I'm like, dude, please, bro, bro, bro. bro, bro, I'll fight you, bro. Sponsor me, bro. James James, I'm in college. Okay, so (laughs) 
<laughs> do you have anything? Yeah, no, because we were talking about. Um, so yeah. I saw this movie uh, the other day at Esquire. Yes, it was called Alexi. It's a foreign film. It's about the guy from Stranger Things. Yeah, that's what it is. Jameson's right. I'm just gonna stop explaining the movie. <laughs> um, but it is. So it's about this woman, and her name is Alexi, and she lives in Europe, and she basically lives like her parents are both rich business owners so she lives in this like giant ass house like off the coast of wherever and she's basically just it shows her lifestyle and it shows her getting involved with like many different men and like seeing those relationships play out and what's interesting about it is that it's sort of it doesn't feel like there's ever any sort of story. I mean, yes, with the progressing relationships, whether it be with, like, man A or man B, you start to see their, um, like I said, like, their chemistry grow. But it's more so just feels like a slice of somebody's life that you're just watching. Like, you were dropped in the middle of it, and you're just witnessing a little bit of it happen. Because even the ending, like... So throughout the movie, it's just like, oh, she's with this dude. Now she's with this dude. And she keeps going between the three. And they're all just like, why are you playing with my emotions? And it's very weird because one of them's like, one of them's her friend's like rich husband that like her friend really hates. But she just like, they fool around whenever she's not there. Ooh. And then one of them's like this, this like really nice and talented, kind of handsome and charming like musician. who's So looks a like, simp. Yeah. A simp, but without the... Uh, loser simp qualities <laughs> so a man so not a simp <laughs> exactly and he's really cool and she keeps trying to go for him but she like at one point she cuts it off because she just is bored and then at one point she tries to come back to him but then she's like oh no we can't be together because i want to get this internship in belgium and i will and that she's like banging on this the entire time she's about 27 28 and she still lives with her parents, which is not a problem. But the way that they set this movie up, it's like, oh, she doesn't do anything. She just sits at her parents' house all day and gets drunk with like and sleeps with random dudes. That's how they set this character up to be. And so she's like banking, and they're like, oh, how's that internship in Belgium coming? And she keeps saying like the entire movie, like, oh, it's gonna happen. Oh, it's gonna happen. So and she's just like she. It's clear that she wants to get out, I and mean, she doesn't really know what to do. Get out, directed by Jordan Peele. But then. Like, later in the movie, she gets an email that she didn't get the internship. And she's just, like, has this moment of... <laughs> I have no idea, I have what, no they're idea what they're at. doing, but they are laughing I just see Tommy holding there. his phone up to his headset, and Mike is, like, crying. He's playing <laughs> something off of YouTube. I, I know. But, anyway, they're just... So, she sort of goes from that, and then she just is like, you know what? I'll just accept my life here. And then she sort of just, like, becomes a tour guide around the area, and, like, things start looking up for her. And then the ending is really weird. Like, it doesn't seem like it's about to end. It doesn't really give that sort of... Uh, Does it just end? <laughs> yeah, no, because she goes into, like, this room with where she's, like, developing all these photos, and the ending is, like, she puts, she puts up a photo of, like, the musician dude, the simp, not simp dude, and it just, like, cuts. And then it says, Alexi. It's, like... It doesn't have this sort of three-point structure. It's sort of just, oh, we're watching her life now. Oh, oh, this is happening. Oh, oh, now it's over. Now we're not. And at first when I ended, I was like, what the, f what the hell was this? But then there were a lot of introspective people in there that were like saying what they thought. And it made me think, like I said earlier, that it's kind of interesting and in that it's not just some story. It's that literally it feels like a segment out of somebody's life. Sort of like the Truman Show, but she never notices. <laughs> that sounds really creepy, but it's really interesting, actually. I would definitely recommend giving it a watch. When you're in the Truman Show, bro, my life is a movie. Anyways. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, that sounded very interesting, but like... Yeah, it is... Uh, very confusing. No, it's time. a... It's, um, it was made in Croatia, so... Oh. And it's like all dubbed. I got really scared that when you were going to say that um, like she was like in a room, I like... Have you ever seen the movie Enemy with Jake Gyllenhaal? No, but I know what you're talking about. I thought it was going to do be like something like that. That that movie, I thought it was a good movie and then it got really pretentious and I stopped liking it. That's I know what you mean. Yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal's great in it. No, yeah, Jake Gyllenhaal's a great actor. I love Jake. I mean, Gyllenhaal. I feel that way about a lot of movies yeah. and a lot of people. I can leave.
Yeah. Hey guys, welcome to Boy with Hair. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, um, oh god. So I I wanted to talk about something. Yeah, I know. I, I'm very <laughs> that I'm very passionate about. Uh, comic books. Comic books. Oh. Comic books. Yeah. Oh my god! It's like we have the same mind. Wow. It's just I know you sort of. It's almost like we also just talked about right before the podcast what we were going to talk about. Oh my god, dude! I don't even remember like what we. What? <laughs> Anyways, go ahead. So, um, to start off, I know you're not a big comic reading boy. Yeah. But I do know you watch superhero movies because we've talked about like Endgame and stuff like that. So I wanted yes. to start off. Wh- who are some of your favorite superheroes? The Flash. Oh, he's one. He's one of my top. Spider Man. He's my favorite. He's your favorite. He's my favorite of all time. The most. I feel like a lot of people really like Spider Man. He's just fucking cool. It's just. It's not that he's cool. It's like he's one of the most relatable characters ever made. Like uh, there was a guy who wrote like a Superman comic book I have, uh, and like a bunch of movies. He, and he said Spider Man is the best he- best hero because he's someone everyone can relate to. He's not yeah. the ha- most handsome guy. He has he does still have girl problems though, uh, he gets bullied. He has dude, money problems, stuff like that. Literally like, in like the game when you play oh like on dude, PS4. I've, I've played that game and I want a PS4 so bad just so I could have the game. It's so good. I play oh. it constantly. He's just he's literally flying in and out of like different apartments and he just has problems with MJ and he's like, yep, I'm a superhero, but gotta find a way to pay my rent somehow. He's yeah, just yeah, very, literally. Even though he's a superhero, he's a very relatable dude. Um, but I will say a lot. As much as I like like the Marvel movies, I like a lot yeah. of DC superheroes more. Like I'd say one of my favorites is probably Captain Marvel, otherwise known as Shazam. First thing I was so confused because I was thinking of like the because you yeah. know that he was originally Captain Marvel. Yeah, no, the reason that happened is because Marvel had a Captain Marvel, DC had a Captain Marvel. Marvel's like, <laughs> but we're Marvel. Ba- basically, what happened is Marvel got the copyright for the name Captain Marvel before DC ever could. Yeah, pretty so, much. So, uh, they they still call they went back and forth calling him Captain Marvel and Shazam for a while, and then once it was once uh 2011, they like DC Comics rebooted their whole continuity started it's just Shazam fresh, now, and they were like, let's just call him Shazam. And the movie, by the way. Great movie, dude! Shazam is fire. That's a v- that's a great movie. It's very like reminiscent of like the Tobey Maguire Spider Man movies. I agree. I will say, I think it was a little fast paced, but that I agree. I agree. But I, like, like I don't think that's bad for like a movie about a kid. No, but I will say that um, the scenes with like the foster children and the foster family, I feel like those are very short lived. Like I really wanted to see yeah. a lot more of them, but you, you didn't get much with the foster parents. No, and I really wanted a lot more with, like, his relationship with his family, but yeah, it just, you know. Yeah. There's what was there was good. Yeah. Uh, I'd have to say some of my favorite. I I, pr- I said already uh, Spider-Man is my, like, number one superhero yeah, ever. Definitely. Uh, be, like, for multiple reasons. Like, again, I relate the most to that character. Like, for yeah. example, Spider-Man Homecoming came out. I was mm-hmm. so excited to see that movie, and I watched it, and I was like, that's literally me. Really? Like, I related 100% to that movie. I, 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 There's a lot of people on the internet, Twitter specifically, that think Spider-Man Far From Home is, like, the worst Spider-Man movie. It's not. It's very good, but I, I like Homecoming more just because of, like, that emotional attachment I had to it. It's just, yeah, dude. Tom Tom Holland Spider- oh, he's Spider-Man is a very good Spider-Man. One, because... I don't recall if we talked about this on one of our last podcasts, but yeah. whatever. No biggie. Um, but I know I've said this to you before, where I feel uh, Tobey Maguire made a good Peter Parker, yeah. and his Spider-Man was good, but it was like... It was, it was fine. It had room to improve. Yeah. I think Andrew Garfield was a good Spider-Man. Yeah. I don't... He was a he's really... too pretty. He was a really douchey Peter Parker. It wasn't that he's douchey. It was like, I, why would Peter Parker ever skate and wear a thrasher shirt to his graduation that's what i'm saying dude like like like, i I was like watching like reviews of those amazing spider-man movies and he literally like i didn't realize this he takes his gown off there's a thrasher shirt and i'm like are you kidding me yeah his name shouldn't have been peter parker it should have been kyle it should have been brad you just see a monster on his desk (laughs) punched a hole in the wall you know that scene where he like graffitis a spider-man symbol that should have been a monster energy symbol get out of here but 
Tom Holland, I feel, nails both of them. Oh, he's perfect. And that's the thing I like about him is yeah. he has these powers and he's like really strong, but he still doesn't know how to use them. And he's still yeah, just he's like learning. in the inside. Even when he's on his in his suit, he's just this clueless teenager that's yeah. just like, what's going on? Like, he, I can't handle all this. What's happening? Uh, I, I read more DC comic books and I'll explain that in a minute. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I'm s- I've start I was like why do I have like no Marvel comic books cuz like I used to read a lot of comic books both Marvel and DC yeah, like the library that. and stuff like that and I just didn't have any and I realized one series I want to try and collect all of is Ultimate Spider-Man which started in 2001 which is like basically the Tom Holland Spider-Man yeah. like he's a dead ringer for that character but I wanted to collect that series because I relate to that series even more than like Homecoming and stuff right cuz I relate to the character but um yeah, some of my other favorite superheroes is uh my boy Superman. Uh, yeah, he's pretty cool. Superman's I. Uh, it's just not. It's not that I can relate to Superman. It's like partly because Smallville is one of my favorite TV shows. Yeah, you were talking that, about that, Smallville yeah, last, last week. Yeah, last episode. Yeah. Yeah. So Smallville is one of my favorite shows. So that really got me more into Superman, and also just like stuff about the character. Like I didn't realize this because uh, I'm a mo- movie nerd and a comic book nerd. So obviously I started writing a Superman movie script. And I did. I was like, I didn't realize it. He's like, great. He's he's predisposed to be great at everything on Earth. He's super smart automatically. He's super athletic automatically. But the one thing he can't do like automatically that he has to learn to be good at is like creative stuff, yeah. which is why he becomes a journalist. He has to learn to be good at that. You know. That's kind of admirable. Yeah, because it's like he could, do s- <laughs> he could do. He could do. I mean, darn, uh, <laughs> darn, <laughs> darn uh, shoot, shoot, crap. Um, that's one of the things I really like about him is that yeah. he could do all these things and be like super good and super tenchi- pretentious, but he's just like he's just a good guy. He's just a farm boy from Kansas. Can- Jesus Christ, Kansas, Kansas, Kansas yeah. Uh, like juice. <laughs> uh, as we were saying earlier, uh, he's probably Superman's probably my third, but my second is uh, Robin. Like I'm you know, throwing in m- all of them, all in the, the Robins? comic books for people that don't know. There's like, there's a million Robins, too many Robins. But my main Robin that I love is the first Robin, Dick Grayson, who becomes like Nightwing and yeah. later becomes Batman and stuff because he's literally like DC Spider Man. He just doesn't have powers. You want to know something funny? I was at yeah. my buddy Darius's house. Uh, if you're watching this, Darius, hi, I love you. Um, and we were playing Injustice and. Yeah. Nightwing was one of the characters. I was like, "Who's that?" And he ex- he was explaining that he was uh, like a former Robin, and that's when I and this was like a month ago. This was very recent. This was and that's recent. when I found out that there were multiple Robins, and yeah. I really like. I don't want to say fell in love with that but idea, I, but, like, but like really, that's just it, awesome. It, yeah, legacy characters are some of my favorite favorite things about comic books. Marvel doesn't have too many because the whole thing with Marvel is like. Uh, in the Captain America comic books, Bucky dies, and he was the first sidekick. And because of that, no superheroes really took on a sidekick. Yeah. Like, there's, like, the Avengers and, like, the X-Men and the Fantastic Four. They're just chilling. There's a team called the Young Avengers, but, like, they're not sidekicks. Like, there's really no sidekicks. They'll get their own stuff going on. They're just young superheroes. But in DC, you have, like, Flash as Kid Flash. Mm -hmm. Aquaman as Aqualad. Wonder Woman has Wonder Girl. Batman Robin. Superman Supergirl and Superboy. And Crypto the Superdog. Crypto like, the super d- that, dog. That show is amazing. That was a good show. Not but, gonna um, lie. Yeah, like th- that's just a really cool thing. And there's always multiple versions of those characters yeah. throughout like comic books because of like comic books used to do this really cool thing where they actually aged the characters and didn't just make them thirty for forty years. <laughs> uh, looking at you, Marvel, uh, <laughs> but like they they were like, oh, let's just have like Flash, Wally West. Kid Flash becomes Flash, Bart Allen, Kid Flash, who will become Flash. Like it's 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 interesting. It's really this cool. I'll be on. Will this be? I'll be on the test. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, the Flash is uh my, probably like one of my fourth favorite characters. The Flash because he's just cool. He's just sweet. That's what I'm saying. He's just cool. He runs fast. He's just like yeah. Yeah, like, I I really I like Wally West the most as yeah. the Flash because of the uh, the Justice League cartoon I used to watch. But like the one right. on the show, like Barry Allen. Love that. I loved the first two seasons of the mm-hmm. show. Then started like dipping quality and I just kinda stopped watching. Yeah. 
but all of, all of those shows do that. But um, I think my fifth one might be Daredevil. I don't know though. I don't know. You sound kind of conflicted on him because I don't know. Because I, I, it's definitely a Marvel character, but I don't really know which, what who would be. I I really do dig Daredevil though. Like, I never really got into Daredevil. He's he's interesting. He's blind lawyer becomes a vigilante at night. Interesting. Do you know who's really badass? Who, who I'd say is like probably a fourth for me. Deadpool. Oh, of course you would say that. <laughs> what do you mean? Of course I'd I feel say like, that. I feel like you were the kid in high school that wore a lot of Deadpool merch. I really wasn't. Okay, that's good. I had. I what I was dating. I a girl did that, have okay, three no, Deadpool shirts. I did. I had one Deadpool shirt. I got from a loot crate. Yeah, I, I have one. And it was a shirt of him hanging upside down. It just said tacos. But I was dating a girl in high school that had one of those hoodies that, like, the hood zips up oh, to it. It's like a mask. No. Yeah, it was Deadpool. It was very. That's a little rough. Yeah, but, you know, high school you know happens, dude. Yeah. And you no. get over it. Uh, but, no, I love Deadpool. He's, He's just. the mo- I really like the movies. I think I need to read more. I, I need to read the comics because. Uh, dude, Wade Wilson is just, like, cool. Yeah, he's, he's just very straight up, which I respect because I'm – it kind of reminds me of me because a lot of times when I go through life, I'm just like, okay, I'm here to do what I need to do and when I want to do anything else can F off. And so, like, when I'm in econ, I'm just like, yeah, yeah, okay. And it's like with Wade Wilson, he gets very impatient at a lot yeah. of things and he's very sarcastic and he's very just like does yeah. whatever the hell he wants. But also he's got this side to him like when his SO, whose name escapes me at the moment in one of the movies, just yeah. like – Gets kidnapped. Away. He's like, oh, yeah, oh, gets kidnapped yeah. and all that kind of stuff. He's just like, broken. it brings up this side and he's just broken inside. And yeah. It's like, there's and a lot to this guy. In the and comics, a lot of the writers either depict him to be like super zany and goofy and hot topic. Yeah. Or they actually like try to delve in the character. And there's a good run that I, I've heard it was good. I've never read it. But where uh, the writer like depicts him as a sad clown. Which like, like yeah. he's still like super zany and goofy, but like it get, does get serious. Like I think in the. Uh, uh, arc he like there's an arc where he like adopts a daughter, yeah. He like saves her life and stuff, and uh, I think that's really interesting. Something I wish the Deadpool movies did in the comics. He has like two separate inner monologues. One's the really crazy one, and one is the really more logic one. And the logical one, like the like one's way maybe this is yeah yeah basically pretty much yeah, which is really interesting. But uh, one thing I really wanted to talk about related to comics. There is a comic yes. book I read this year, came out in 2019, and is one of my favorite comic books of all time. It's about Spider-Man, and it's called Spider-Man Life Story. And I called Marvel out for like not aging their characters, but this this uh, book is like, what if Spider-Man aged? Like he came, like the book came out in 1962, like Amazing Fantasy number 12 or 16 yeah. or something. They were like. What if from then on he just naturally aged? And s- the book starts in 1966, and each issue, uh, I want to say it's like 10 issues or something like that, is a different decade. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's it's not 10 issues. I think it's six issues. Yeah, it's six issues. Yeah. And uh, so, like, it's the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, and 2010s. And uh starts in 66, and he's like, should I go to Vietnam? Uh- and help out and like Captain America and Iron Man are in Vietnam and that's where they they do cool things where like they take really popular stuff that happened in the comics in that decade yeah and put that in there but also do their own stuff like uh because of Vietnam the civil the superhero civil war happens early okay. like like in like the 70s and 80s hmm. and stuff like that yeah so like the 60s he like fights green goblin uh 70s fights green goblin I think. <laughs> I don't, i'm trying to remember because it's been a while but like it's just him aging and like by the 80s uh it, it's just really cool i don't i don't know how to d- describe it and it the, looked- the last issue is in 2019 they have miles morales they do stuff with superior spider-man which really? Is a really popular thing they have venom in it hmm. they have like super cool stuff and peter parker is an old man and he's with Miles Morales, and I'm gonna spoil it. He dies, but like it's the most poetic thing, cause uh, he like starts out the issue and he's talking to Mary Jane, cause they're like married and old couple. And he's like, I keep having the same dream about the night Uncle Ben died, where I'm in the office 
the guy, the burglar's running, and I could stop him. And she's like, dude, stop. Yeah, she's just chill. Just stop. I've heard this stuff before a million times. And so the issue happens. There's a scene where they have to go to a space station. Yeah. Stu- stuff goes down on the space station, and he has to s- he sends Miles home because they did their job they needed to do. And he's holding the space station together. And he's, like, imagining one last conversation with Mary Jane. Mm-hmm. And um, in the comics, her first uh, appearance is she shows up at his door because the entire time Aunt May's like, honey, there's this really sweet girl. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And she's like, she has a really great personality. And he's <laughs> like, that means she's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> and she just shows up at the door and she's just like, face it, tiger. You just hit the jackpot. And he's like imagining this last conversation. He's like, are our kids going to be okay? And they're young. Th- yeah. In the, in the, it's an all on his head. And she's like, oh, yeah, we'll all be fine. Like, we're, we're good. You, you, you did everything you could. I know the one thing you wanted to do was save Uncle Ben, but, like, you still saved the planet. And he's like, thank you, Mary Jane. I just want you to know. And then it cuts to him holding the ship together. And he just goes, you're my jackpot. And then he dies. <sighs> and the book ends with him saying, I had this dream about the night Uncle Ben died, and I know what you're going to say. You're going to say I need to stop beating myself up over it. It's been like 40 years, 60 years, but it's different. It ended happily, and it shows him stopping the burglar, and that's how the book ends. It's an amazing book. I just spoiled it for everyone, but I just wanted to talk about that part because that part has stuck with me for six months. That sounds like a good book but honestly that sounds very similar to spider-verse as well as yeah 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 as yeah. well as that um a line you were saying about like oh me and my kids will be fine that reminds me of that scene in endgame where Pepper oh Potts is like, and she's like she's like we'll be fine tony you go you, we'll you be fine tony now. just fuck just freaking die she, well no she says you can rest now because it's like yeah. he never sleeps yeah yeah, never rests. yeah yeah but that's cool no that did remind me a lot of spider-verse because yeah. doesn't doesn't peter parker die in spider-verse too doesn't in the old in the Miles Morales universe, yes. Yeah. And he's like blonde and stuff like that. Well, I know that Spider Man, but I thought the older Spider Man Oh no, no. It ends with him like trying to get back with Mary Jane. That's right. Yeah, yeah, because he like right. webs the door and You're right. Okay. Well, uh I don't have anything else to talk about. These go by faster yeah, and I know. faster, <laughs> man. Yeah, but I think this is probably going to be our longest episode. You think so? I have a feeling because I just droned on about a comic book. <laughs> I don't think so, but yeah. we'll find out. We'll, f- we'll see. As always, uh, thank you, Bearcast Media, for allowing us to do this podcast. Thank you to Executive producer Stephanie Cox. Yes. Thank you, Tommy Rochester, for switching for us. Thank you to Mike Mitchum, our for lovely camera friend Mike, operating. for operating some cameras today. Thank you, Mike. Our second camera, which is the one that should be this one, is just not on. They don't need to know that. Well, you know, I'm just Shh. okay. I love you, Mike. Alrighty. He said it back. Well, thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Boys, Boys with, with Hair. Hair. As always, I'm Jameson. Uh, I'm Velocipaster. Have a good night. (laughs)